who do you think are the people that would most require this information? In relation to the official offer, I believe the people who would most benefit and who require the information uh, regarding that would be basically the people who are living in three bedroom semi detached houses uh, because I think they're the part of the population under most pressure at the moment because anybody who is um, already, shall we say, heavily dependent on social welfare at the moment don't seem to be suffering the way people who uh, have mortgages, for example. Mm. they don't seem to be affected in the same way mm. are you talking about people that have say a thousand euro mortgage a month and who are struggling to put food on the table over paying their mortgage absolutely um because what happens is people who are trying to pay maybe a 12 or a 1500 euro a month mortgage um suddenly if they lose a job or if if, if that situation or circumstance mm. alters they then lack the uh the extra currency to take care of things that that weren't a problem in the past so when they adopted all these obligations these debts these credit cards at the time it seemed okay because the job was okay the money was going okay it was just after the so-called celtic tiger so um the people weren't actually irresponsible in their borrowings considering the circumstance they were in at the time but of course, as, as times have moved on and as the economy has diminished, uh, of course, their mortgage payments have not diminished accordingly. And um, because the mortgage period was increased in a lot of uh, cases from, say, 20 years to 25 years, or even some of the 35-year mortgages, I believe, are out there. Well, there's no way anybody can predict an economy, an economic model 35 years in advance based on the existing system. So those people are most at risk of uh, the foreclosure process. Mm. So to stave off that foreclosure process, the only real way to do that is to offer the absolute maximum you can after you've taken care of the basic necessities of life, i.e. electricity, gas or oil, food on your table, or maybe all three together, you know, uh, shoes for your children's feet, warm clothes for the winter, after all those essentials are taken care of, whatever you have left, by all means, offer all of that to the finance house. It doesn't matter what institution it is. <clears throat> if it's a lending institution or a bank or whatever, if money is owed, you can simply send in an offer. It doesn't have to be written. Okay? And... Uh, if, for example, if you owe money to a bank for a mortgage, for example, which is, I think people need to get familiarized with this in relation to mortgages, all you got to do, like I said, if you owe a thousand euros a month and you can only afford to pay 400, pay them the 400. Don't not pay something. Don't stop paying because you can't make the full repayments. Okay? This is the mistake that people make. They, they, they stop paying. And, they can't. and a lot of people walk away from their homes, from their yeah. businesses. Yeah, you don't have to do that. This is very un simple and uncomplicated. All you got to do, and you don't have to ask permission, you just have to act in a sovereign capacity by taking control and making the decision. And if you can afford to pay 400 a month and feed your family, give them 400 a month. If you can only afford to pay 200 a month, Give them to the 200 a month, feed your family. That's the priority. And why can't they refuse? Well, if they refuse, they, in law, cancel the debt. The debt is cancelled. If somebody refuses an offer for the other party to make restitution, if they, and if they continuously do this, they've actually cancelled the debt in law. That's the whole debt cancelled in its entirety. So... Don't panic, because there's a solution. And the solution is to affect payment. Just because you don't have enough to pay doesn't mean you should pay nothing. You should always offer the maximum you can. If you offer the maximum you can before, particularly before you go into a default situation, but even if you've gone into a default situation or you can't afford to pay, 
but particularly before if you know next month you're not going to be able to afford to pay your mortgage or whatever send them an offer now to say next month the maximum I can pay is this and the thing seems to be that the lender cannot refuse once you start affecting payment no uh, that's very important to, to remember when you make an offer to a lender because they are claiming basically um, you owe them you acknowledge this by saying to them, yes I owe you and I'm, not, I'm aware it should be a thousand or two thousand whatever all I have is 500 or 50 I'm offering that to you and I'm acknowledging that this situation exists and I'm doing my absolute best my intent is to try to pay you you cannot be shot down in a courtroom for attempting to do the right thing if, if however you refuse you're in trouble because uh, if you look up intent you'll see um, to refuse is to uh, have mal intent to attempt to evade or to avoid and uh, yes they will react uh, badly as far as you're concerned in those circumstances and what are some of the methods of affecting payment simply if you have a checkbook post them a check okay of say 400 euros but um, pretty much affecting payment and let's say uh, performing on the contract is your intent to perform on the contract is key not that you have enough to make the payments it's your intention to perform is the real thing so even if you only have one cent or one euro pretty much yeah I mean if you can't feed yourself and sustain yourself on the planet well how can they get any money anyway so if you excuse me you need enough excuse me currency units or whatever to sustain yourself on the planet with food heat and the rest can go towards paying a corporation a legal fiction entity a paper construct uh, so you can you, you can perform on this debt so even if it was a hundred euros a month pay them the hundred euros a month but even better again pay them not every month but every week so if you can only afford to pay 100 a month pay them 25 every week so the intention to perform on this alleged debt you know you're not refusing to perform on this you've actually increased your intention by fourfold because mm. they can't get a judgment you multiply against. your intent yeah you can multiply your intent four times do it every week don't wait for it next month do it every week and if you don't want to send a check go into the bank and lodge it to that account okay but if you're doing it by check write the account number on the back of the check just in case things go astray into another account write the account number on the back of the check and send it in to simplify that again you can just walk into the bank with 25 washers euros uh, fill in the lodgement slip obviously to that account and slide those washers across the desk and you get your receipt for the lodgement and that's it you performed on the debt do that every week four of those receipts proof documented proof that you've performed on the debt not once but four times in that month you can't they can't get a judgment against you to leave your home and I think you should make it clear that this is for people who are struggling to feed yeah. their family. This is not for people who want to get away with paying their debts. No, no, no. I don't. I don't. Pretty. I don't really do. Give any kind of uh, suggested remedy. Let's say to people who are already dealing in commerce. You know, uh, because they're become they become mini bankers themselves, don't they? so it's either if you're dealing in commerce well you gotta expect the hits so take the hits but the only thing you really need to safeguard is the your home your family home 
That's all. The rest is a bonus. Mm. If you can get other people to slave away and pay you rent and pay you mortgages and other bills for you, well then you're no better off and different than the banks that have tried to steal from you in the first place. Do you want to um, briefly describe the actual offer? The offer itself is quite simple. Again, simplicity is uh, key to uh, a lot of situations, as I'm sure people uh, agree. The official offer is simply this a piece of paper with the words official offer written at the top to bank, whomever the bank is, from the person's name to now operate account one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The euro symbol or dollar symbol, wherever you're from, write in the amount as as satisfaction on all account demand obligations signed by. You would simply staple either the check, the postal order, the bank draft, or indeed, if you really have to, the actual currency note itself, the euro or whatever, staple it to the to this piece of paper, fold it. Address it to the bank. Don't address it to uh, somebody in accounts because your contract is not with the guy in accounts. If you're contracted to Bank of Ireland, shall we say, that's who you must send the offer to. Once you send it into Bank of Ireland, they can determine which department or who should get it after that. So send it directly to the bank and, um, and then make sure you can actually perform on it. So don't send in an amount that you can't afford. You must remove ego from this situation. I think it's very important. You might want to pay more, but if you can't actually pay more and you promise to pay more than you have, where are you going to end up? So be realistic. Do your budget, budget for food, clothes, energy, whatever. Send it in, uh, and whatever you can afford at the end of that. And if you have three or four uh, demand obligations and total them up divide the figure by what you have left and send each one an equal amount and I think that's important too make it equal between all of them because if you show favoritism to one over another potentially you could end up in a, a court case situation where why have you basically reduced their payment and not their payment so I think it's equality right that's what everybody is talking about this is basically what MABs used to do they don't quite do this anymore. But basically, this was the process. Have you heard stories whereby people are walking into banks and uh, handing five euro over the counter or whatever it may be? Yes. Um, that's another method. Uh, this was the, but basically the original method. And uh, I'll give a little bit of credit here to uh, Harry from uh, We The People, uh, www.wethepeople.ie. Now, what simply Harry did is uh, Harry realized this was... This is what the system is made out of. The system is constructed of offer, acceptance, and consideration. And he, he wasn't able to afford to manage the full payment, whatever it may have been at the time, but he didn't want to show uh, mal intent. So he said, I'm going to show uh, positive intent. And uh, he wasn't much for letter writing at the time. He likes, uh, he's a man of action, as they say. He likes to do, to demonstrate. So he simply walked into the bank, up to the counter, he said to the girl or the man behind the counter, I don't know which, he took the currency note out and he said, this is to be lodged into account, yada, 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 and he slid it to them. And um, apparently he's been maintaining that position for 17 years. Approximately 17 years ago, I had a situation <coughs> where I allegedly would owe a lot of money and uh, I had a lot of issues at the time to deal with so I had to put my thinking cap on very quickly so probably talking about a quarter of a million at the time which was a lot of money of course so any everything that I had worked for would would have been gone very quickly if I had engaged <coughs> legal opinion or counsel but I had to do that initially just to handle that situation because there were six similar situations at the time to do it kind of maggots so what happened was uh, the idea was to 
come to an agreement of payment in this particular matter this matter so the solicitor I had engaged to supposedly look after the situation said that uh, there was a call update in the High Court essentially where there were two High Court cases and one Circuit Court case all together at the same time <coughs> so the Circuit Court case <coughs> of course we're all familiar with the situation where courts are just to deal with money so this, the District Court deals it up to 5,000 beyond that it goes into the Circuit Court the ceiling of the Circuit Court is around 38 grand beyond that goes into the high court and the monies are unlimited okay so one circuit court and two high court would have been a wipeout in fees <coughs> alone so the circuit court case i dealt with the other two cases were coming up with the solicitor involved he stated that there was a call up for these cases to be entered in for a hearing in the high court and if I didn't uh, engage him and get legal counsel's opinion I was going to uh, <coughs> lose everything right this was the thing so I said well will you not go down to the insurance company and offer a settlement arrangement simple you know so he said no so he said, I'll fight hard for you in court. So I said, well, I don't really want it to go to court because, well, for obvious reasons. Because if you go to the high court, the fee in the high court begins at 25,000 for one side and 25,000 for the supposed alleged opposition. <coughs> so straight, into, straight away, uh, that had to be prevented. So simply what I did was I went into the High Court, which was at this particular this date, this call up date was only reserved for barristers to get these cases entered into for hearing dates so they could make loads of money. So I went into uh, the High Court, but just before that, pretty much everything used to do with timing. I had posted a check, but no letter. Uh, into the insurance company for a certain amount of monies not too much and not too little so that went through the system so it was cash so I had I obtained a copy of that check brought it into the high court for this call up so the uh, the judge said well who are you I said well, I'm just the alleged defendant here you know and this case cannot be entered he said are you a barrister i said no i said uh, the case cannot be entered and why is that he said i said because the insurance company accepted part payment insane so the just said well where's the proof of this i said here have, have it in my pocket which was a copy of the check so that was it simple so the judge says this case cannot be entered for a hearing and then the, the barrister for the uh, insurance company stuck his little head out and he said, I didn't know anything about this. I said, well, you know about it now, don't you? So that was the end of it. Simple. And ever since then, you've been making small offers. Oh, yeah. Well, you see, I did sure perform on this, uh, this alleged debt, right? To the extent that I just couldn't, I just hadn't got the, the resources to perform. Uh these quite large amounts of money just hadn't got it this would have wiped you out correct mm. well the circuit court already had done that I just had no money left so I just send them a few washers every week and you've been making offers since then I've been performing since then sure it doesn't matter if they accept the offer or not. My intent to perform, that's the issue. And that's what people need to know. Your intent to perform on the contract. 
So to simplify the whole thing for everybody out there who may be in mortgage arrears or whatever, if they have, for example, a thousand euros a month to pay in a mortgage, they can only afford to pay 500 and uh, they may not even be able to afford that because they have to feed their families. The main thing is to sustain yourself on the planet. You need food if you can only afford, for example, 400 euros a month. Well, then give them 400 euros a month. And even to make that better again, don't do it on a monthly basis, do it on a weekly basis. So your intention to perform on the debt has been increased four times. So how can they make a legal determination against anyone? And explain again why they can't refuse. Well, you see, if they can't refuse, it means they have actually nullified the debt in law. If I owe somebody money, if I owe somebody 100 euros and they give them 20 euros and they refuse that offer of payment of making restitution, they've actually cancelled the debt in law. And has there been feedback from barristers and solicitors? Yes, there has. Uh, if you look at the official offer uh, site uh, on the website, pardon me, uh, you'll see that the official offer, apparently the, the uh, tactic they call it, I don't call it a tactic, but they refer to it as a tactic, but they seem to be very impressed with the tactic and uh, they seem to be of the opinion that um, there really was nothing anybody could do about it within the system, if you will, because, as I said, you're performing on the contract as best as you can. And, um, yeah, apparently they were very impressed with its simplicity. Because this method can be sourced in legal material, is that correct? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, this is, in fact, the legal system. This is what they rely upon to uh, bring about court hearings and contracts in the first place. This is the actual uh, construct that they use. Yeah, they rely upon it. So they can't not accept it because to not accept it literally would destroy their own system. And many people are going to ask, what about the build-up of interest? Sure. Um, that possibly, yes, that could happen. Uh, in fact, it probably will happen. But what I would say to you is, well, if you're in a, a dire straits situation and you can't afford a mortgage, well, subsequently what's going to happen is you're going to be either evicted, in which case, well, you've no roof over your head. Um, so will penalties and charges build up on the account? Possibly, but you'll still have a roof over your head and um, maybe things will improve down the road or, you know, but it's 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 definitely better than trying to live outside and uh, i don't know if you take a look at the weather out here at the moment in ireland it's very cold and um you know particularly if you've got a young family you're, you're not going to survive outside so uh penalties and interest and all that stuff building up sure but um that's okay because you still have a roof over your head and at the end of the day if you end up paying your official offer uh, for 50 years. I've heard it described as a sticky plaster. Yes, uh, basically it is, really, I suppose. Um, all contracts can be negotiated and renegotiated, thus is the nature of contracts. It's only when you go into breach of contract it becomes a problem. So once you attempt and, and in fact, offer to uh, uh, maintain the contract to the best of your ability, um, this is the sticking plaster aspect of it. So, for example, I, can, I call it a sticking plaster because if you cut yourself, you need a sticking plaster. And many people are hemorrhaging uh, money right now. So you need a sticking plaster first to get you to the hospital, if you will. Uh, that calms down the problem. Okay. If, if you consider, uh, you know, if you don't cover the wound, you'll bleed to death. And if you don't put a sticking plaster on your situation, legally or otherwise, you'll hemorrhage all of your finance. And uh, that will be a problem for a lot of people. So yes, a sticking plaster is a pretty good uh, description for it. But uh, as I said, depending on the wound, sometimes a sticking plaster can save your life. Mm -hmm. Just remember to keep payments current when possible. It doesn't matter how much. No, it doesn't matter how much. <clears throat> uh, it doesn't matter how much, literally, if you can only afford one penny, one cent, 
if you can only afford one cent, offer the one cent. If they say, oh no, no, that's not enough, keep offering it. Say, it's, it's all I have and I'm offering it to you. That's important. Your conduct is very important. Do so with dignity. It's not your fault. You didn't create the economic bubble. You might have taken part in it, but you didn't create it. You didn't plan it. You, didn't, you weren't in control of the, what the finance houses were doing nationally or internationally. Let's face it. So there is no shame in this. I, want to, I, I need the people to really feel that in their heart. There's no shame in not being able to pay your mortgage in this climate. Absolutely none. And you're certainly not alone in this country at the Absolutely moment. Absolutely not. I mean, it's, uh, what's the figures at the moment? Uh, approximately 100,000 families, I think. Mm. And that's 100,000 families. Mm. They'll say uh, mortgages in the newspapers is 100,000 in arrears. But what they forget to mention is that's probably a couple living together. Maybe it's a, a brother and sister that bought a, a home together. Or maybe it's a husband and wife and children mm. or whatever. But there's usually more than one man or woman involved in, in each mortgage. So you can multiply whatever they say, probably by three times the amount of people involved. So if that's 100,000 mortgages in arrears at the moment, or maybe it's 90,000, but that, we're talking maybe possibly 300,000 people who are to be affected. That's a huge portion of the population of this country. It's a massive portion, and that's at the moment. That's not uh, taken into consideration the amount of people who are perhaps about to go into arrears this month, mm. uh, just coming up to Christmas. Mm. Well, there's that report that I mentioned, uh, it's come out last week, that more and more people, after paying all their bills and their mortgage, they only have 70 euro a month yeah. spare. Yeah. So, and they're the people not yet in arrears. <clears throat> they're, they're, those people are probably uh, very close to going into arrears. And uh, uh, as we heard, there was a terrible story that one family uh, were actually uh, eating cardboard, cardboard to stave off hunger pangs, which I think is disgusting. To take something in, in through your mouth that has no nourishment or almost, I don't know about cardboard, but it has some financial or actual nourishment, maybe it does somewhere, some boffin scientist probably works out. But to put something into your system to fool yourself and uh, that it's food, no, that to me is uh, abhorrent and it's uh, repugnant. Mm. And I've also heard reports of banks telling people to pay them before eating. Again, um, don't worry about what the bank manager tells you. Worry about your family. Worry about your friends. Strengthen your community, strengthen your community bonds. Talk to people, talk to your neighbours. How about this? Um, take a piece of paper, put it in your printer type the following line I'm struggling paying my mortgage are you would you like to talk print it 20 times 30 times slice up the paper walk around your housing estate and put them through people's letterboxes and let them know that you're willing to come and meet them and talk and say possible possible solution don't look for somebody else to do this if you're embarrassed doing it where you live do it in another housing estate get on a bus go across the city do but do something People need to do something. People need to know that this uh, potential solution is there for them. And I think people need to realise that they are the power in this country. It's Absolutely. not the banks. It's not the institutions. It's not the even close. That's why, uh, for example, even if one was to buy a little blue book called Bun Regna Hearn, you can buy it in the Eason's. I think it's only €2.90. Euros 90. Even the bank, I'm sure, wouldn't mind you taking €2.90 euros 90 out of the budget that month just to buy a copy of this. And uh, read the preamble. Just read the preamble alone. That, that, that's everything you need to know right there, in my opinion. And apparently they're all good with this. They support this. They believe that's true. So I say, well, yeah, sure. Accept it. Make them an offer. Make them an offer. They can't refuse. <laughs> no need to get all Italian here, but yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Pretty much. And do you want to just make, make them an offer they have to accept that's <laughs> you can offer them a washer a year that's it that's your, your situation your predicament mm. that's pretty much it mm. and <clears throat> like I say 
if they don't accept this, if they return that check, just keep sending them another one. Keep sending them. So when they refuse a return this check that you sent and offered to make restitution, and they return that offer from you to make restitution, they pretty much shot themselves in the foot. Because just bring it. see this will never go to court because they know they can't win anyway. They can't get a judgment, succeed in getting a judgment against you. So it's all fear. The whole thing is constructed on fear. And then you may send somebody a letter and maybe it might have red ink on it. And people, that, you know, it's a psychological scare. You know, people get letters with red ink on it and they think it's going to be more serious. It's just psychology. You know? So you just return them sender. <clears throat> and book, keep performing on the debt. 25 euros a week, whatever, that's all. Keep your receipts. And there's nothing to worry about. It's as simple as that. It's as uncomplicated as that. So there's no need to leave your home. There's no need absolutely to shut not. up your shop. There's no need to go hungry. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And where can one find discussions on the official offer? Uh, it's actually springing up on quite a few websites now, I believe. It's, uh, it's grown legs, as they say. Uh, but um, as far as I know, the first one was on TNS Radio. <laughs> dot ning dot com um harry has often mentioned it on many radio interviews and uh, i think he might have even mentioned it uh, when he was interviewed on i think it was uh city fm yeah i think he mentioned it on that as well so i mean harry's been as i said harry's been uh, saying to people for years mm -hmm. if you can't afford to pay just go in and slide out across whatever you can afford <laughs> now i think it's important that people slide over the maximum they can afford that way you can stand in a courtroom Put your hand on your heart and in your own mind and in your own conscience you'll know you're telling the judge the absolute truth that you have tried to give them or you have offered them the maximum you have no judge can take a, a, an, an order or an action against you under those circumstances and if, please don't take my word for it and make a call to a barrister or a solicitor or indeed buy some really good reading material you can download some of these free on the internet this one is a, a first book of jurisprudence. I consider that essential reading. And um, if you really want to get a good idea of what the legal words mean, a lot of people are talking about Black's Law Dictionary, etc., etc. This one would be a better uh, buy, in my opinion. This is a dictionary of modern legal usage. And um, it's by uh, Brian A. Garner, who, of course, uh, contributed an awful lot to the Black's Law Dictionaries. So this is, this is, this is a good one, as they say. And you can look up the terms to see how they're used. The definitions of the words aren't always as important as how the words are used in, in legal terms. But that's about all that's in that.